In this video, what I'd like to go over is the proof for the 45-45-90 triangle. So normally when you have a right triangle and you see this proof, you're used to seeing these values and you may not know where they come from. So the rule is x, x, and x square root 2. So you've seen that whenever you have a 45-45-90 triangle. The purpose of this video, hopefully, is to try and shed some light on why these values or why this rule is written the way that it is. So let's go ahead and look at this square. I'll erase what we have here. Now we know in a square, all the side lengths are the same. So I can come around here and I can say, okay, well, I know this is X. All of these side lengths should be X. So in a square, you have four right angles. So a way that you generate a 45, 45, 90 triangle is you come in and you draw a diagonal inside of a square. And now I have a 45, 45 isosceles right triangle. So I'll come over here to the right and I'll redraw this. So here, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and now my leg lengths have not changed. This is still the leg that used to be a part of the square. So those leg length is X because all the sides were the same. What we're really trying to do now is figure out, well, how do I determine what the length of this hypotenuse is? So what we're going to do is we're going to call on an old formula that we're used to seeing. And this formula is Pythagorean's theorem. So we remember Pythagorean's theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that referred to your legs of your triangle. There's a, b, and then here's c. So we don't know the hypotenuse, but we know the values of a and b are x. So we could just plug this in. Here I have a squared, so that would be x. So this is x squared plus b squared, and b squared is also x, remember those used to be the size of a square, equals, and we don't know what the hypotenuse is. So we're just going to keep that as c squared. So what we're going to try to do now is solve and see if we can determine a value for c. So I know that x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Now we have 2x squared equals c squared. So here we do want the value of C. So what we're going to do is we know if I rewrite this to say C squared equals 2X squared. If I want to isolate the C, this is currently squared. So all I have to do now is take the square root. So C is going to equal the square root of 2X squared. Well, you can treat this as the square root of 2 times the square root of x squared. And you can simplify x squared. So c here equals x times the square root of 2. So this is where the rule comes from. And you can prove this plugging in any number for x. So for a demonstration, let's just try 5. Let's say x here was 5. So I have 5 squared plus 5 squared equals, and we'll still say c squared. Now, with the rule, we know that this should be 5, 5, and then the length here should be 5 root 2. But we can still use Pythagorean's theorem to work this out with a number, especially since we just did it with all variables. So this gives me 25 plus 25 equals c squared. So 25 plus 25, we know is 50. This equals C squared. I want the value of C by itself. So I can take the square root. So C is going to equal, now you have the square root of 50. Well, this can be simplified. So we look for the largest perfect square that can go into 50. And that's 25. 50 divided by 25 is 2. So the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 is 50. Well, you can simplify the square root of 25 because it's 5. So 5 root 2 is the value of C. And this will work with 
any number that you can substitute into this, and that's why your rule is x, x, x root 2. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment.